When we think about pirates, we normally think about Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow. But think again. This is a story about a pirate raid on a small fishing village in southern Ireland where people were taken into a lifetime of slavery. The sack of Baltimore took place on the 20th of June 1631 when the village in West Cork was attacked by pirates from the Barbary coast of North Africa. The attack on Baltimore was the largest by Barbary slave traders on Ireland. From at least 1500, the pirates conducted raids on seaside towns in Italy, Spain, France, England, the Netherlands, and as far away as Iceland, capturing men, women and children. Between 1609 and 1616, England alone lost 466 merchant ships to Barbary pirates. While the pirates looted the cargo of the ships they captured, their primary goal was to capture non-Muslim people for sale as slaves or for ransom. And many were destined to become galley slaves. This meant that they were chained to their oar on a galley ship for quite literally years, having to go to the toilet and be fed in that same position, never leaving the ship. Many women could end up being concubines, living in a harem. The attack on Baltimore was led by a Dutch captain, Jan Janssen van Harlem, also known as Murad Reis the Younger. In 1600, Murad began as a Dutch privateer sailing from his home port of Harlem in Holland, working to harass Spanish shipping during the Eighty Years' War. So a privateer was somebody who owned their own ship and were given permission by a country to harass enemy shipping, uh, to bolster that uh, country's navy. And if the privateer intercepted a ship, they were allowed to keep the cargo or indeed the ship as a bounty for their service. Of course, when wars finished, many of these privateers turned to simple piracy on the open seas to fund their lifestyles. Johnson overstepped the boundaries of his work and found his way to the semi-independent port states of the Barbary coast. During this period, he had abandoned his Dutch family and converted to Islam or turned Turk, as the phrase was used in those days. In the summer of 1627, Murad used a Danish slave to pilot him and his men to Iceland. In the raid, about 50 people were killed and close to 400 captured. One man, Olafur Iglinson, was taken along with his wife and two sons. He returned to Iceland in 1628, the following year. But his wife did not return until nine years later in 1637, and his two sons never returned. At Baltimore, Murad's crew, made up of Algerians, launched their covert attack on the remote village that June night of 1631. The attack was focused on an area of the village known to this day as the Cove. They captured 107 villagers, mostly English settlers, along with some local Irish people, but some reports state that Murad let the Irish captives go. Murad's force was led to the village by a man called Hackett, the captain of a fishing boat Murad had captured earlier that day. It is believed that Hackett brought the pirates to Baltimore in exchange for his freedom and also to save his own village from attack. Hackett was subsequently hanged from a cliff top outside the village for conspiracy. In the aftermath of the raid, the remaining villagers moved to Skibbereen and Baltimore was virtually deserted for generations. This happened more drastically and on a bigger scale on the European countries that had coastlines around the Mediterranean Sea. Almost a hundred years later, Thomas Pellow of Penryn, Cornwall, spent 23 years in captivity and wrote a detailed and popular book about his experiences. His captivity began at the age of 11 in the summer of 1716 when his ship was attacked by Barbary pirates after crossing the Bay of Biscay. Thomas was one of the individuals handpicked by the Sultan Moulay Ismail of Morocco and integrated into one of Ismail's many slaves and was given to the Sultan's son. The Sultan's son was known to be a cruel man. He had a black slave killed for simply disturbing two pigeons he had been watching. The Sultan's son tried to convince Thomas to convert to Islam, promising gifts and a better life, but Thomas refused. Infuriated, he began to torture Thomas. Thomas wrote, quote, He committed me prisoner to one of his rooms, keeping me there for several months in irons, and every day most severely bastinading me. Bastinado was a torture that involved caning the bare soles of someone's feet. Eventually, after weeks and weeks of torture, Thomas gave in and was forced to convert. Thomas was conditioned to live in constant fear of his life being ended at a moment's notice. With time, 
the Sultan assigned Thomas into the slave army. According to Thomas's text, white European converts could rise within the Moroccan military system, but were confined to their own separate fighting units. With time, he was made an officer in the Sultan's army and participated in three military campaigns. He was given a wife by the Sultan, was married and had a child. And this might be a tactic used by the master to keep his slave in check or to stop him escaping because the slave might grow fond of his wife and certainly his children. But when, on military campaign, he learned of their deaths, he then wrote, quote, I thought them to be far better off than they could have been in this troublesome world. Thomas eventually fled Morocco by boarding an Irish ship and returned home to Cornwall in the summer of 1738. At most three of the Baltimore captors returned. One report states paying the sum of $150 for the release of Joan Broadbrook and a paltry $86 for an Ellen Hawkins. The two women, having spent 15 years in captivity, returned safely to England from where they had originally come from. The fate of the others abducted is unknown. In the first years of the 19th century, the United States allied with European nations, fought and won the First and Second Barbary Wars against the nations of the Barbary pirates. Many of their ports were bombarded by these navies, including one that freed 1,200 slaves. The wars were a direct response of the American, British, French and Dutch states to the raids and the slave trade by the Barbary pirates against them, which ended in the 1890s, when the region was conquered by France.